Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. Can we begin to appreciate God this morning? Let's begin to give him all the praise. Let's begin to give him all the worship. Let's begin to give him all the uh, all our adoration this morning. Let's adore the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. The I am that I am. Eternal rock of ages. Bible says in Psalm 100, it says, Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Verse 3 says, Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Verse 4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Why should you do this? Verse 5 says, For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Enter his gates with thanksgiving this morning. Enter his courts with praise this morning. Enter his gates with thanksgiving this morning. Enter his courts with praise this morning. If you are watching us online, I want you to enter his gates with thanksgiving. Don't be distracted. Worship the Lord. The Bible says we are two or three people are gathered together in his name. He is there. I want you to know that God is with us right now. God is with us right now. If you are home, God is with you right now. I want you to worship him this morning. Give him all the glory. Worship him this morning. Give him all the honor. Worship him this morning. Give him all the adoration. Worship him this morning. Give him all the glory. Worship him this morning. Give him all the honor. Worship him this morning. Give him all the adoration. He alone deserves to be praised. He alone deserves to be worshipped. He alone deserves to be praised. He alone deserves to be worshipped. Worship him this morning from the bottom of your heart. Give him all the glory from the bottom of your heart. Give him all the glory from the bottom of your heart. He is great, he is greatly to be praised. The Lord is great, he is greatly to be praised. The Lord is great, he is greatly to be praised. The Lord is great, he is greatly to be praised. Worship him this morning. Give him all the glory for another time in his presence. For another time in his presence. Worship him for another time in his presence. Worship him for another time in his presence. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration this morning. We thank you for what you are said to do. We thank you for what you are said to do. Whether the devil likes it or not, we thank you for what you are said to do. Whether the enemy likes it or not, we thank you for what you are said to do, O oh Lord. Whether the enemy likes it or not, we thank you because we will not go back home the same way we have come. Blessed be your holy name, O oh Lord. Blessed be your holy name, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray this morning that you be with us. Honor us with your presence, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, let there be signs, let there be wonders this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, let lives be changed. Let destinies be transformed this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise.
don't stop praising him don't stop thanking him just lift up your hands and give him all the worship all the praises he deserves it he deserves it he deserves your honor he deserves your praises he deserves your shouts he deserves your cries he deserves your tears he deserves your laughter he deserves everything about you he deserves the breath that you breathe he deserves everything he is god almighty he is jehovah he is great i am he is the mighty god he is the everlasting king he is the glory he is the lift out of your head you have to give him praise you have to give him thanks you have to give him worship you have to bow down and worship him you have to thank him thank you that i'm alive lord thank you that i can breathe thank you that i can walk thank you that i can talk oh god almighty oh king of glory the lift of my head my healer my maker my everything my Father, we worship you, Lord. We worship you. You are the light of the world. You are the light that shines in our darkness. You are the light that took us from darkness. You are the God, the deliverer. You are the one that translated us to your kingdom. The kingdom of light. The Bible says he is light. In him there's no darkness at all. When darkness sees him, he bows at his feet. He bows at the mention of his name, Jesus. Because he went to Hades and he defeated darkness. He defeated darkness for me. He defeated darkness for you. He wiped away all the hate writing that was against you, that was contrary unto you, taking it out of the way, nailing it to the cross, having dissolved principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, I will shout, I will give him praise, I will thank him, I will praise him, I will exalt your name, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Light of the world. You're the light of the world. You're the light of the world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Light of the world. You step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of the life spent with you I'm gonna sing it again I see the light of the world you step down into darkness Open my eyes, let me see You're the beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent with
to see my sins upon the cross. I'll never know how much it cost to see my sins upon
These are the days of Elijah Declaring the word of the Lord These are the days of blood This is righteousness being restored These are the days of the harvest The field as as white in your world And we are the voice in the desert Crying, declaring the Lord before he comes riding on the cloud shining like the sun at the trumpet call lift your voice this year of jubilee and as night is in salvation before he comes riding on the cloud shining like the sun at the trumpet call lift your voice this year of jubilee and as the there's no God like Jehovah, 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 there's no God like Jehovah.
to pray, I see a rise in my life, a rise in my church, a rise. Oh God, in my family, a rise. Even in my body, a
I will wait on you, Almighty God, in the beauty of your holiness. And I will worship you, Almighty God, in the beauty of your holiness. Sing, I will wait. I will wait on you, Almighty God, in the beauty of your, in the beauty of your Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for having mercy on our souls. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to come into a house of worship. Thank you for all that you do, Father. We say, Blessed be your name forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want us to uh, talk to the Lord. I want every one of us to talk to the Lord. 
Brethren, let us talk to the Lord. Let us speak to the Lord. Let's tell God the desires of our heart. I want everybody to talk to the Lord. I want everybody to talk to the Lord. Tell God why you are here today. Tell God the reason why you are here today. Let us talk to the Lord, everybody. Let us talk to the Lord. Talk to Him. What do you want from God today? We all came to church to meet with Jesus. Tell the Lord exactly what you want. Tell the Lord the area of your need, the desires you have. Hallelujah. Tell God, once again, Father, we are grateful and we are thankful for everything that you have done. Lord, we give you the glory and the praise. Father, touch us today. Meet us at the point of our needs. Satisfy the desires of our heart. Let today be a Sunday of encounter. A Sunday of visitation. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Uh, you know, we, we pray every day from Monday through Friday, 6 to 6.30. From Monday through Friday, 6 to 6.30 on the phone. And we pray by the grace of God every Saturday from 7 to 8. And we pray every Sunday from 8 to, from 8.15 to 9 o'clock. Hallelujah. Avail yourself. Join us in prayer. Pray with us. And God will hear and answer all of our prayers in Jesus' name. Father, once again, we thank you. Our midweek service has always been life-changing. We go deep into the world every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And our prayer service every uh, Friday at uh, 8 o'clock. Our prayer service every Friday at 8 o'clock. I want you to avail yourself. Uh, God will change your life forever in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We've been talking about faith this month of uh, uh, May. We've been talking about faith. We've been talking about faith. And we are trusting God that every one of us, we will continue to believe God by the grace of God. You know, everything you get from God is according to your faith. Everything you get from God is according to your faith. Every single thing you get from God is according to your faith. You know, your faith is the most important thing for you to get something from God. Your faith is your access to limitless possibility. Your faith is your access to God. Hallelujah. You know, the interesting thing is that God has no limit. God has no limit. But God has a limit in all of our lives. God himself has no limit. But he has a limit in all of our lives. The limit God has in my life is set by me. The limit God has in your life is set by you. God himself has no limit. But we set the limit God has in our individual lives. Every one of us. So my limit can be here. I determine the limit of God in my life. And you determine the limit of God in your life. That is why in Mark 9.23, Jesus said, Mark 9.23, Jesus said unto them, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. To him or to her that believeth. All things are possible to him or her that believeth. So you can see that God has no limit, but the limit in your life is set by you. 
to him that believe it. Hallelujah. So, faith is staying persistent with God. With God's word. Regardless of opposition. Regardless of opposition. Staying persistent with God's word. Regardless of opposition. Hallelujah. When you believe God's word, virtue is released for performance. So, God releases performance. That's why the Bible says, Blessed is she that believes, for there shall be a performance of those things that were spoken to her from the mouth of the Lord. So if you believe God's word, God releases the performance of that action. Your faith is your victory. Your faith is your victory to overcome the world. Your faith in God is your victory to overcome the world. So the Bible says, For whosoever is born of faith, Whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is our victory, even our faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So these are very, very important for us to know. You know, every situation is reversible by faith. You can reverse anything by faith, no matter what has happened. You can reverse it by faith. But what I want to stress this again. A lot of times that Jesus healed a lot of people, Jesus never said, my power healed you. Jesus never said, my might healed you. Jesus never said, my glory healed you. How are they healed? He said, be it unto you according to your faith. Look at this story in the Bible in Matthew 9, 27. Look at this story in the Bible, Matthew 9, 27. Bible says, and when Jesus departed, thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them. So they asked Jesus for mercy. Just like we cry unto the Lord all the time. So they asked Jesus for mercy. Bible says in verse 28, and when, and when he was coming to the house, the blind, man, the blind man came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. No, Jesus knows that he can do it. Jesus knows that he can do it. And I'm sure all of us, we kind of know Jesus can do it. We know that there's nothing God cannot do. Brethren, look at the ceiling. Look at the, look at the floor. Look at the carpet. The Lord can make the, the ceiling floor and the floor carpet. There's nothing he cannot do. I mean, he makes a way where there seems to be no way. The Bible says that before I formed thee in your mother's womb, he was the one that formed us. There's nothing he cannot do. We know that. We are all in agreement about that. I think it's kind of unanimous, at least to believers, that there's nothing God cannot do. Clear. But Jesus asked this guy. So the problem is not whether God can do it or not. We know he can do it. He says, believe ye that I am able to do this. They said unto him, yea, Lord. Then he touched he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. So you can see that God has no limit. The limit of God in your life is set by you. It's according to your faith. The limit of God is according to your faith. So God can do everything, but he doesn't. Because he's waiting for you to stretch out your faith unto him for him to move in your life. He's waiting for you. You know, one of the most interesting stories in the Bible is when the woman with the issue of blood did not even ask Jesus for permission. It tells us how God is. She didn't even ask Jesus for permission. She didn't even say, Jesus, I, I need you to heal me, and so on. She didn't even talk to Jesus. She didn't even talk to Jesus. She went straight. She said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. And Bible says that she did what she said. And Bible says, virtue came out of Jesus, and she was made whole. Hallelujah. So you can see that the onus, the responsibility is not on God. It's on us. It's not on God. God can do everything. 
but God is, God is not going to do it unless we stretch out our faith and believe God to be able to do what we want him to do. And our faith must be anchored on the word of God, on what he says. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Our faith must be anchored on what he says. You know, I love uh, this scripture I'm about to read. I love the NLT version, New Living Translation version. And what does it say? It says in verse 21, the NLT version says, you know, this is the story of a man whose son was a lunatic. And Jesus went to the mountain of transfiguration with Peter, James, and John. And Jesus was coming down. And when he got down and he saw people around and the disciples were asking, trying to cast out a particular uh, demon. Please, can I have the, uh, uh, the mic with the battery? The one that has... No, not that one. The one with the, the purple one. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, uh, so when he came down, they tried to cast out the devil, but they could so they told Jesus. Now, I want you to listen to this. In verse 21 of Mark 9, Mark 9, 21. Mark 9, 21. I'm just giving you a background that we have to hold on to God. And we'll go into what we have for today. Mark 9, 21. Mark 9, 21. So Jesus, uh, it says, uh, 21 says, How long has this been happening? I want you to know that God is able to solve long-standing situations. And if you have any long-standing situation, hold on to God. When we talk about long-standing, it could be from birth, since you were born. It could be since you were born. Or when you were 10, it happened. Or when you were 20 or 25. So God is able to resolve it. So this man says, Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy. We don't know how, how old this boy is at this point when this happened. Now, look at verse 22. So, he now explain what happens. The spirit often throw him into the fire or into water, trying to kill him. The devil is a bad devil. And thank God for Jesus. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. I'm reading New Living Translation. So, the father said, have mercy on us. Help us if you can. I, I want you to note that. Have mercy on us. Help us if you can. That's what the father told Jesus. Verse 23, Jesus said, what do you mean if I can? What do you mean if I can? Jesus asked, anything is possible if a person believes. I'm reading the New Living Translation. He says, what do you mean if I can? I mean, you see, the, the man threw the responsibility on Jesus. Jesus says, no, it's not me. It's you. What do you say? Help us if I can. No, 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 no. And that's what we do. All of us, we wait for God's time. And God too is waiting. God is waiting for us. God is waiting for us to exercise our faith, to stretch out our faith. The woman with the issue of blood did not even need Jesus to get her miracle. She just exercised her faith and she got what she wanted. Jesus Christ said, what do you mean if I can? It's kind of, he says, Jesus asked, anything is possible if a person believes. So it's not on Jesus. We, we've said this, that Jesus can do it all. There's nothing Jesus cannot do. We know that. He created the heavens and the earth. He can do everything. He can lift the mountains and he can make the valleys plain. That is Jesus. But he doesn't do it because he waits for us to exercise our faith. Do you believe I can do it? That is when the Lord moves. Can you remember when Jesus went to Nazareth and he wanted to heal? He wanted to do miracles. And Bible says 
he could not do mighty works because of their unbelief. He couldn't. So, it means we render the Lord handicapped in our lives when we don't believe him. We render Jesus handicapped in our lives when we don't believe him. So, what do we do? Stretch out your faith. How do you stretch out your faith? Hallelujah. Faith. So, what you have to do is you know that whatever situation you are going through right now, the Lord can fix it. We all know that. And it's, it's not rocket science. God is not scratching his head and saying, ah, how are we going to solve this one? Oh, this one is a big one. This one is a big one. Ah, we've never seen this one before. God is not scratching his head and trying to figure out the solution to your problem. God is not, God has a million solutions to every problem. He has, a, it's a matter of choice. So God is not trying to figure it out. So we know that God can take care of everything and is able, the Bible says he's, he's able to do exceeding and abundantly above all we can ever ask or think. So that is clear to every one of us that God can do that. Now, so the responsibility is no longer on God. The Bible says he that must come to God. Everybody, if we are going to go to God, the Bible says he must believe. If you are going to go to God, that if you have anything, the requirement for going to God is that you must believe. You must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Look at the choice of what? Impossibility. So, God does not show up in our lives. God sees all that is going on. God sees your problem, your situation, your circumstance. God sees your cry. He hears your cry. He sees all of that. But God does not show up until we stretch out our faith to him. Until we grab the helm of his garment. Until we touch him and ask God in the name of Jesus that he should intervene in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, Bible now tells us that how do we get this faith? How? How do we acquire faith for God to move in our lives? Bible says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Before you say, I can listen to this or that, it says hearing the word of God. Hearing the word of God. So, continuous hearing is what brings about faith. You have to hear it over and 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 over again for your faith to be built in God. For your faith to be built in a particular situation. Hallelujah. That brings us to our, our, our topic uh, for today. You know, faith or fear? Faith or fear? Have you ever been afraid? Of something or something happens for example when the pandemic happened were you scared to death why you were you are we watched the news and what did they tell us in the news the death rate has increased they tell us the number of people that are dying every day faith or fear they kind of have the same source information information is the source of fear too Information is the source of faith too. But the, the information that is source of faith is the word of God. So the Bible tells us that faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. Now let me tell you this. It is which one you have more that will prevail. That will determine whether you are fearful or you have faith. Which one do you hear more? Is it what CNN says that you hear more or what the word of God says? Have you ever had this that whose report are you going to believe? Whose report are you going to believe? Let me show you the uh, report in the Bible. Let me show you this. In Romans 1.17, whose report are you going to believe? In Romans 1.17, in Romans 1.17, hallelujah. Romans 1.17, it says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. Brethren, for you to be righteous, for you to be righteous before God, 
you need to exercise faith in God. First of all, it is determined, it's clear that none of us can please God without faith. I mean, the Bible did not say it's difficult to please God without faith. It says it's impossible. It's impossible. So you can't please God. You must believe God concerning every situation of your life, concerning anything that God says. So uh, actually, uh, it's, uh, uh, let's see. Hebrews. Hebrews. No, let me finish this Romans 1.17. The Bible says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, The just shall live by faith. Everybody, what does that mean by the just shall live by faith? Do you know what it means that we live by oxygen? We live by oxygen. If you are going to be a spiritual person, there's no other way. It's faith. You have to believe the word of God, period. You have to believe the word of God, what God says. That's the bottom line. If you are going to be righteous, you have to believe the word of God. That is faith in the word of God, regardless of opposition. Regardless. I want you to know that the, the work of the devil is to make you disbelieve the word of God. The work of the devil, that's the work of the devil. Can you remember when Jesus was baptized? When Jesus was baptized, what happened? The Bible says that the heaven opened. And there was, the spirit came upon me and there was a dove. And God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. That's what God said. Everybody heard it. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. What was the first temptation? The Bible says after the baptism, the spirit drove him into the wilderness and he was tempted. What was the first temptation? If you are the son of God. So the devil did not believe the word of God. So God said, this is my beloved son. The first thing the devil says is, if you are the son of God. That, that's, I don't believe. If you are. So the devil will always oppose the word of God. So the Bible says that the just shall live by faith. You will survive in this kingdom by faith. There's no other way for you to survive. You will survive by your faith in Christ. Hallelujah. That's the way you are going to survive. So that's the only way you are going to be righteous before God. So Bible says uh, that if you want to survive, you have to exercise your faith in Christ. You have to believe Christ. You just have to believe him. Hallelujah. You have to believe the Lord. And God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, let's focus on faith or fear. Let's focus on faith or fear. Let's see the type of report that you receive. Let's see the type of report that you get. Let's see whether uh, they tell you that, oh, you know what? Uh, 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 the economy is so bad. Uh, people are not getting job. And you, you took that report and said, this is my own report. This is, I like to be realistic. I like to be realistic. So uh, the economy is not bad. And what did God say? What did God say? Now, let's look at a story in the Bible quickly. And this is in Numbers 13, verse 30. This is a very, very uh, 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 familiar story. Let's start from verse 27. Numbers 13, verse 27. The Bible says, And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sendest us, and surely it flowed with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. So they told them to go and spy the land, the 12 tribes. And they went there to spy the land. Brethren, look at verse 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and every and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. These are giants. The children of Anak are giants. Everybody, I mean, they are strong people, tall, and all of these reports, they are all true. What they said they saw is true. Now, the Amalekite dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittite and the Jebusite and the Amorite dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanite dwell in the, by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against these people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought, and they brought up an evil report. Hallelujah. What did they bring? 
evil report. Evil report. They brought forth evil report. And they, of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land though which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitant thereof. And all of the people that we saw are in it are men of great stature. Story, 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 all true. Now, I want everybody to understand the foundation of what God is saying. This is a God that you saw 10 plagues in Egypt. The Lord destroyed Pharaoh, the greatest army in the world. The Israelites, they have never, never in their life been to one battle. And with the outstretched arm of the Lord, God destroyed Pharaoh, the greatest military in the world. When they saw how the firstborn died. They saw all of this. Having seen all of that, now, they are now saying, because they face a little challenge of giants in the land, and they begin to doubt the Lord. You can imagine how upsetting that is. Probably, probably the Bible is probably the Bible is just there. But can you imagine that your son or your daughter asked you, that, "Daddy, I need, mommy, I need ten thousand dollars." And boom, you gave it to your child. Then all of a sudden, your child needs 1,000. And your child is freaking out. That, oh my goodness, I don't know whether I'm able to get this 1,000 from my dad. I don't know whether or how I'm going to get this 1,000. And you are looking like, come on, I gave you 10,000. That was why God was upset. God was upset with them. You know the rest of the story? You know the rest of the story? What happened? The rest of the story is in Numbers 32, 6. Numbers 32, 6. And Moses said unto the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brethren go to war? And, ye sh and, and shall ye sit here? And wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord had given them? Thus, did your father, when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to see the land, and when they went up into the valley of Esco and saw the land, they discouraged the heart of the children of Israel that they should not go into the land where the Lord had given. And the Lord's anger was kindled the same time, and he swore, saying, God swore, saying, Surely none of them that came out of Egypt from 20 years old and upward shall see the land which I swear unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me. Save Caleb, the son of Jephno, and Kenazite, and Joshua, the son of Nun, for they have wholly followed me. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Now, let me give you some bullet points for, you to, uh, for things to be crystal clear based on what God wants us to know today. Number one, number one, number one, negative or positive information brings about fear or faith. It is either you have faith or you are fearful. You can't have both. You can't have both. Information you receive will either make you have faith in God or bring fear to your heart. Information you receive will either make you have faith in God or bring fear to your heart. I want you to listen to the next one. I want you to listen to the next one, brethren. You will always hear negative information. But if you don't have the word of God, you will be fearful. You will always, you don't have to look for it. You don't have to search for negative information. It's, it's readily available. Readily waiting for you. But if you don't have the word of God, what happens? You will be fearful. You will be fearful. 
Look at the next one. Positive information, like the word of God, will build up your faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. Negative information is easily come by. But you have to what? Work hard to get positive information. You have to work hard. That's why we have to study and hear and hear and hear and hear the word of God to be able to overcome the negative that we've heard. So everybody, listen to this. Evaluate yourself and see whether you get enough positive information to counter the negative information. Evaluate yourself. Once you see that you are afraid of something, just know that, oh, I'm missing something. I'm missing the word of God. Because fear comes as a result of a particular knowledge that you have. Information. For example, you hear that somebody has cancer. Now, all the knowledge of cancer begins to come to your head. Oh, it's a terminal disease. Oh, this person is not going to survive. That is the information that comes to your head. But when you hear that somebody has headache, oh, you are, you are not afraid. You are not afraid when you hear that somebody has headache. But when you hear that somebody has AIDS, you think fear will grab the person. Now, the only way to overcome that fear is for you to go into the word of God and begin to stand on the word of God. If not, the fear will overcome you. And so many people have died of the fear of sickness, not even the sickness itself, the fear of it. They've died of the fear of it. And that's why Jesus always asks, do you believe I can do this? So that's number one. The information you get, very, very, very important. So evaluate yourself. Anytime you are afraid, just know that you are missing something. I'm, I'm afraid you are missing something. When you hear some information and fear grabs you, you are I'm missing something. He will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him for they trust in him. He will keep them in perfect peace. I will not be afraid of evil tidings for my heart is fixed trusting the Lord. Sometimes you are scared that you are going to lose your retirement. You are scared that what is going to happen to you. I was young. And now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed beg for bread. That's the word of God. Sometimes you are scared that you are not going to be married. There is the word of God for everything that you are going through. That you have to go back to the word of God. If not, if you just continue to hear what the doctors say, oh, the doctor will give one name to it. I mean, we are talking about God. And I want everybody to understand this. When they say that with God, nothing, I mean, when they say that, nothing shall be impossible for, to him that believe it. So, Bible says that to him that believes, nothing is impossible for to that person that believes. It's not because we can do all things. It's because when we exercise our faith, we are saying, God, do it. Since there's nothing that is impossible for God to do, so it means God does the impossibility in our lives because we exercise our faith in God. We are standing on what God has said. So watch out for the information that you receive. Watch out. That is what is going to bring either fear or faith. But you just continue to, in a, in a specific area, just continue to hear the word of God in a specific area. If you see that you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are being afraid, and God will help us in the name of Jesus. Number two, focus on the word, not the situation. Focus on the word, not the situation. Don't focus on your current situation or circumstance, but on the word of God. Bible talks about Abraham. Bible says, he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. Bible says that he considered not his own self now dead, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not consider the situation. 
focus on the word of God, not the situation. I'm telling you, if you are looking at the situation like this, you'll be scared. But you have to look at the word of God. Remember, faith is bringing God into your situation. Faith is saying, God, I need you to show your might and your power in this particular situation of mine. So that is faith. You are exercising faith in God. So now focus on the word of God and not on the situation. I know the situation keeps coming to your mind. Focus, shift it and take it back to the word of God. When you are fearful, your focus is on the wrong thing. Your focus has shifted. That's why you are afraid. Do you know the reason why Peter sank into the water? Do you know the reason why he sank into the water? Jesus told him, come. And he was walking on water. Then the next thing, what happened the next? The Bible says there was a storm. There was a mighty storm. And in Peter's head, he can remember the, all, all the fishermen that died in storm. He can remember all the havoc that storm has caused. He can remember all the families that have died because he has been a fisherman. Then he began to sink. Looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Focus. Don't look at the situation. I know there's something going on in your life that you don't like. Focus on the word of God. Focus on the word of God. That's number two. Number three. Don't doubt God. Do you know that any time you doubt God, you are believing someone else? Do you know that any time you doubt God, you are believing somebody else? So for example, if God says, by, by my stripes you are made whole, and you doubt that, then you are going to believe the doctor. You are going to, if you doubt God, you will believe the doctor. So when you doubt God, you are believing somebody else. When God speaks something and you now doubt God concerning what God has said, you don't exercise your faith. The Bible says Abraham was fully persuaded that what he has promised is also able to perform. Fully pers convinced beyond reasonable doubt. So, but when you doubt what God has said, it means you are believing somebody else. Because somebody else says something that you are believing it. Hallelujah. So, doubting God is an insult on God. Can you imagine God is saying something? God is saying something and you are believing CNN. You are believing Fox News. You are believing CBS. All of those news stations. Can you imagine? You are believing what they are saying. Oh, this is the situation uh, and so on and so forth. Meanwhile, God is saying something. So you leave what God is saying, you are believing them. You are doubting God and you are believing them. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That's number three. Don't doubt what the word of God says. Number four. On your way to your promised land, there are giants. On your way to your promised land, to your destination, there are giants. Giants represent situations that are bigger than you. Situations that you by yourself, you cannot overcome. Situations that you need help. You need divine help. So there will always be giants on your way to your promised land. Only faith in God will get you to your promised land after overcoming the giant. Anyone that doubts God will never enter their promised land. Just like Jesus said, I mean, the Lord said, that all of you 20 years and older, you will not enter the promised land. They did not enter. There will always be situations that are bigger than you. Always. After God's overcome that problem, the next thing is you will see another situation that will be over than you again. There will always be. So it is your faith that you have to exercise in God for you to be able to overcome that particular situation. There will always be. You will never come to a point of your life that you, are, you have conquered everything. As you have conquered everything, another big thing will show up. Another giant. Hallelujah. There will always be giant. So just know that you have to exercise your faith. Know that you have to exercise your faith. 
And the last but not the least, Jesus reprimanded a lot of people when they did not walk in faith or when they were fearful. Jesus said something like this. He said something like this. Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? So you see that? You see the way he compared it to? Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? So you are fearful because you don't have faith. You are fearful because you don't have faith. Hallelujah. Jesus said this also, fear not. You know, this is a very interesting story. I mean, that way are you fearful was when he walked on water. Huh? Now, fear not, believe only. That is the story of when uh, uh, Jairus' daughter died. And somebody came to tell him, you know, Jairus told Jesus, my daughter is sick, ready to die. Please come and heal him. As Jesus was going to heal him, then the woman with, with, with the issue of blood came in between and snatched her own miracle. And, you know, Jesus stopped, talked, and so on and so forth. Then by, by all the, I don't know what else happened, but that's the, uh, what the Bible says. Before any other thing, the next thing that happened was somebody came. Sorry, don't, 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 don't bother Jesus anymore. Your daughter is dead. Then Jesus Christ said what? Fear not. Believe only. You see? Fear, believe. Fear, believe. Fear not. Believe only. Then Jesus says something like this. Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? It's what you are looking at. What are you looking at? It's what you are looking at that is bringing the fear in your heart. So Jesus reprimanded them. Jesus reprimanded them, every single one of them, when you don't exercise your faith. So I want every one of you, what you are supposed to do from here is this. Look at every situation of your life that you need help from God. Just know that one, God is willing to help you. Two, God is ready to help you. So don't hide under in God's time. Don't hide under in God's time. Do you understand what I'm saying? Can you remember, can you remember the story of the centurion? Remember what happened? When he said, come and heal my servant. And Jesus Christ said, I will come and heal your servant. Then... Let's say it's going to take Jesus. You know, in those days they walk and you, and you can see how uh, people just stop Jesus and ask for a miracle when he's going somewhere. So I don't know how long it would have taken for him to heal the servant. But let's say, uh, to be conservative, let's say it's going to take two hours for Jesus to get from where he is. I think it's going to take probably a day because of the walk in those days. But let's say it's going to take two hours for Jesus to get to that uh, centurion's servant's house. But the guy, what, the, what Jesus wanted to do is, I will come to your house because Jesus said it. That's how we know. But the guy said, don't come to my house. Speak the word. My servant will be made whole. The guy got what? Instant miracle. Right? If it were left to Jesus, it would have taken him, it, it would have gotten his miracle in, in what? In two hours. Let's, the, the amount of time it's going to take him to walk to his house, we know he's going to be healed. We know that. Right? We know that. Because Jesus Christ said, I will come. But if it were left to Jesus, it would take what? Two hours, three hours, four hours. But the, who determined the timing of that? Don't get me wrong. God has a timing for everything. Don't get me wrong. God has a timing for everything. Right? But a lot of times... God is waiting for us, and we are also waiting for God. And you know, God can wait for eternity. We can't. We can't. I need my miracle yesterday. Do you understand what I'm saying? I needed a sap. Do you understand what I'm saying? The uh, Bible says a thousand years is like a day for God. So I don't want. So now, so what I'm saying is that in most cases, 
What is happening is that you are waiting for God. And God is saying, there's nothing I have to do. Everything I have to do, I've done. Everything I have to do, I have done. I've sent Jesus, died, it is finished. It's on you now. Exercise your faith. So what do you do? Continue to hear the word of God concerning a particular situation of your life, a particular issue of your life. Hear it, the word of God. Hear it over and over and over and over until it consumes you. The next thing is you explode. You explode in that situation. You put God in a corner whereby God cannot escape. Because you are standing on his word. And the Bible says he exalts his word over his name. So God will have no choice than to answer. Another story in the Bible that shows that the timing, you can control the timing of your miracle. Another story in the Bible, the Seraphonician woman. When you know what happened to that woman? Uh, uh, she said, come and heal my, son, uh, my daughter. She's grievously a vex of devil. And Jesus Christ said, no, it's not time to heal the Gentiles. Right now, I'm sent to the house of Israel, the Jews. So it was not our time. Jesus was sent to the Jews, not to the Gentiles. So that was not the timing for that woman to get her miracle. But what happened? She got her miracle by faith. She got her miracle by faith. I want everybody to know it's in your hand. Let us move. So ask yourself, don't just wait. And I've told you times without number that when I'm standing here, I'm talking to myself. So don't look at me that pastor is talking to me. No, 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 no. I'm talking to myself. God is talking to all of us. I mean, as, as you are hearing it, me too, I'm hearing it. I'm getting my own too. So just know that. So what I'm saying is that don't wait. If you are waiting, if you are doing nothing, right, brethren, that means don't wait, don't wait, don't wait, don't wait. God has done everything he has to do. It's the responsibility, the onus right now is on you to do what? The onus is on you right now to ex actually move. So look at that area and begin on the word of God. Build your faith. It comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. Hearing of the word of God. Not hearing something else. Hearing of the word of God. Imagine you are hearing something about, you because you want to get married, you are hearing something about getting married, uh, what the word of God says about getting married. You want to have a child, you are hearing something about what the word of God says about having children. You are hearing something. You want, you want, you want to excel in a particular area, whatever. You are building up your faith. As you are building up your faith in that particular area, the next thing is that you won't know when you are going to explode. You won't know when you are going to explode, when the miracle will just jump at your feet by the grace of God. I want everybody to talk to the Lord. I want everybody to make up your mind. If you want God to show up in your situation, the responsibility, the onus is on you. God has done what he's going to do. We know he can do all things. And God has done all that he's going to do. God has done everything he's going to do. I want you to walk with God. Believe his word. Abraham was fully persuaded that what he has said he will do, he will do it. Believe him with all of your heart. Stand on the promise of God. Believe God for your husband. Believe God for your wife. Believe God for your son. Believe God for your daughter. Believe God for your job, for your business. Believe God for breakthrough. Hold on to God. He's a covenant keeping God. God never fails. God is never wrong. He's always on point. In the name of Jesus, believe God with all of your heart and God will show up in your situation. The Lord will visit you. You will have an encounter with Jesus. Father, thank you. As many of you that are not, uh, you are not born again and you have not given your life to Christ, I want you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's the first thing you have to do. Bible says that if you believe with your heart that God raised him from there and you confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. Believe him, ask God for mercy. And if you have backslidden, you have gone away, you have gone astray from God, ask God for mercy and return back to God. Return back to God in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Father, we thank you. We give you the praise and the glory. We worship you, Father. We bless your holy name. We appreciate you forever, Father. Thank you for your word. Take all the glory and all the praise, O oh God. The word that you have given unto us, let it bring forth fruit in 30, 60, and 100 fold. Let our lives not be the same again. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, today, let us begin to move. Let us begin to move. Everyone, you have to be moving. This is the what the Lord says, that if you are not doing anything, right, that means that you are just sitting idle, just waiting for God to move. You have to be the one moving. You have to be the one moving. You have to be the one moving. There has to be something that you must be doing concerning your situation for the Lord to be able to move. So you have to be the one moving. Ask the Lord in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord in the name of Jesus. It's whether you are praying or you are studying or you are fasting or you are acquiring information concerning that area. There has to be something you are doing. Not just waiting for God to move. Because God is already ready. God is ready to move in your life in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. We give you the praise and the glory. We worship you, Father. We say, blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Hallelujah. Please, shall we stretch forth our hands to the pastor and pray for him? Let's ask that the Lord will increase him, that the Lord will multiply him. In the name of Jesus. Let's ask that the Lord will increase him, that the Lord will multiply him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please pray for him. Every time we, we say prayer, we mean the prayers. We are not saying it as a religious uh, act. Let's pray that the Lord will fortify him. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's time for our tithes and our offering. Proverbs 3, 9 to 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. What I just want to bring out briefly in that scripture is honor the Lord. Honor the Lord. There has been a lot of, over the, over the last few years, there has been a lot of controversies about tithe and offering. <laughs> But the word of God stands true. The word of God is never deceiving. The Bible says, honor the Lord. When you are giving, you are giving to honor the Lord. You do your part, give to God, and leave the rest to God. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce, your wealth. The first fruits, your tithes. I want you to package your tithe and your offering in honor to God. In honor to God, not to not to Pastor Balaji, not to any anybody. In honor to God. If you have done that, can you? Pray on your offering, pray on your tithe. Father, Lord, we appreciate you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor this morning for everything you have given unto us, O oh Lord. Blessed be your holy name, O oh Lord. As you are giving this morning, O oh Lord, accept our offering. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, O oh Lord. Give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.
What shall we say unto the Lord? All oh, we have to say thank you, Lord. What shall we say unto the Lord? All we have to say is thank you, Lord. What shall we say unto the Lord? All we have to say I don't know what you are saying to God this morning for his blessings, for his favor upon your life. I don't know what you are saying. I want to say thank you, Jesus. Hey, what shall we say unto the Lord? All we have to say is thank you, Lord. For his goodness, what shall we say? All we have to say is thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All we have to say is thank you, Lord. Hey, thank you, Lord. shall I render? What shall I render to you, O God? I will praise you, O Lord, and shout hallelujah. What shall I render to you, O What shall I render? What shall I render? What shall I render? What shall I render to you, O God? I will praise you, O God, and shout hallelujah. What shall I render to you, I render praises, I render dancing, I render praises to you, O oh God. I will praise you, O oh God, and shout hallelujah. What shall I render to you, O oh God? What shall I render? What shall I render? What shall I render? What shall I render, what shall I render to you, O oh God? I will praise you, O oh Lord, and shout hallelujah. What shall I render to you, O Lord? Hallelujah. Father, indeed we render praises to you. We give you the praise and the glory for what you have done for us. Out of that which you have given unto us, we give back unto you. Use this for the glorification of your kingdom and for the furtherance of your work. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that before the needs will arise, the supplies will be waiting. I pray that before we call unto you, you will hear us. While we are yesterday speaking, you will answer us in the name of Jesus. The Bible says you blessed the house of Obedidom. And you, you blessed Obedidom and his household and all that pertains to him. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you will bless every single one of us and all our household and all that pertains to us in the name of Jesus. Bible says you blessed Jabez. You, you heard the cry of Jabez and you blessed him. Lord, we cried unto you. Bless us, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. We ask for your hand of protection over our lives. Bible says you preserve our going out and our coming in. Father, we ask, O oh God, you will keep our children. You will keep our spouses. Nobody will lose their spouse in the name of Jesus. Nobody will lose their child or children in the name of Jesus. Father, nobody will lose their job in the name of Jesus. Father, nobody will lose their lives in the name of Jesus. Nobody will hear any evil report in the name of Jesus. Father, only good news shall be heard in the congregation of the righteous. In the name of Jesus. Lord, as we depart from this place, we depart not from your presence. Go with us. Sort us out. Do a miracle in our lives. Hear our prayers. Satisfy our lives, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. That area that we are looking up unto you for, we are praying in the name of Jesus that you will meet us at the point of our needs in the name of Jesus. The rest of the year is going to be glorious. We will not fall sick. We will not fall prey to the enemy. We will never take any step we will ever regret. In the name of Jesus, everything will work perfectly well for us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
uh, uh, before we share the grace, by the grace of God, from next week Sunday, uh, we are going to open the church for children's church and everything. Uh, we are going to figure things out, how we're going to, but this is the route we are going to take by the grace of God. Uh, uh, the state of Maryland has opened things up for churches 100%. Uh, the, the state of Maryland, uh, at least, at a minimum. But uh, then the first, uh, 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 because next Sunday is the fifth Sunday of the month, we usually do anointing by the grace of God. Then uh, uh, we will begin to do Thanksgiving every first Sunday. So in two weeks from now, we are going to do Thanksgiving. So those of you that are watching from home, come to church. Come to the house of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, come and celebrate. Come and fellowship with the brethren. Come and celebrate and fellowship with us by the grace of God. And the Lord will help every single one of us in the name of Jesus. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The Lord will go with you in the mighty name of Jesus. And the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit he is with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 in Jesus' name, amen. Glory.